This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for another episode of uh, Condo Insider. Uh, my name is Jane Sugimura, and I'm your host today. And today we are going to be talking about something that you know is kind of near and dear to my heart, mainly because I have to appear before the state legislature and the city council and testify and advocate on behalf of all of you guys, uh, you know, who live and work and have anything to do with condos. Anyway, uh, the issue today is condos and the political process or why condo residents need to actively participate in the electoral process. And we got a general election coming up on November 6th. And so that's what, what this show is going to be concentrating on because I've had so many people who run for elected office tell me that they, one of their, uh, their challenges is they can't get into condominiums to talk to the residents. And so I have with me today as our guest, uh, Sharon Moriwaki, who's running for the state senate, uh, Senate District 12. Correct. Sharon, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Jane, for having me on. This also is an area that's near and dear to me, so thank you for having this show. Okay, why don't you tell us about your background? Okay. Um, I grew up in the Kaka'ako, the Sheridan area, so I'm in the district, Senate district. I went to Kaimiki High School. Um, uh, most of my life has been in public service. So I was uh, the uh, labor deputy director and the personnel director for the state under the Waihei administration. I was the administrative director for the courts under C.J. Moon and that administration. Uh, uh, most recently, I've been with the University of Hawaii, uh, both as in initially as the uh, assistant vice president for the university system, and then more recently with the public policy center. Okay. And are you a condo resident, by the I way? I certainly am. Okay. I've been for many years. Uh, so uh, condo and condo uh, living is very important. And I think and this is why another area that I'm, I'm really concerned about. In fact, about. you're on the board of directors, aren't you? I am. I am. You're on, on the, the board of directors. I am the board. So, 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 so tell me what you're, you know, so you are familiar with condo issues. I am. I am. We're on the board uh, in Kaka'ako Condo. I'm a vice president. Uh, we have a nine-member board, and, and all of the problems of the condo come before the board, as you know, yeah. is being on the board yourself. Um, so we take care of, of all the association problems, uh, looking after the maintenance, the operations, the uh, working with the property and the, the uh, general manager uh, for, for our condo, uh, dealing with things as buying uh, the new... Um, uh, planters to um, the gantry and making sure that our, our, our building is, is safe and sound. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, we, we deal with everyday problems as well as problems that are coming up from the homeowners as well. Okay. Uh, and you're currently running for the uh, state senate district number 12. I am. I Why am. are you running? For me, it all started with Kaka'ako. Okay. Uh, about five years ago, we saw all the building coming up in Kaka'ako, we learned about it through uh, Andrew Gomes' picture of, you know, oh, wow, what was happening. And being in condos, um, as you stated earlier, you really aren't involved. So you don't know what's going around around you. And so when we started looking and studying the law, this being governed by the Community Development Board, we found that they were building too close, too high, not following the rules or the plans. Uh, building residential where it should have been zoned commercial. Uh, and so a small group can make a difference. Our neighbors got together, formed a group called Kaka'ako United. And we took on the board, we took on the governor at the time, uh, and we actually changed the law so now that board has representatives who come from the community. And today we have You're a talking really about good HCDA. board. HCDA, a very good board that listens to everyone, makes decisions for the people. And, and that's the kind of government I want to see in our district, but really for the state. You know, a board that listens to everyone. And when they make decisions, each one tells you why they're voting the way they are. 
And no. when, when you guys got together and formed Kakako United, you basically had to learn what the political process was all we about. We did. We did. We did. And we had to not only learn the political process and who's, who's on first, what's on second, but also had to read all those project development um, uh, applications that came in and the plans and the rules. So it was a lot of work by volunteers. But, and, but it, was, it was important for us to know that there were people in office that we could start nudging. And you guys were able to make a difference. We did. And you and did change did. Uh, what HCDA did in terms of, of, of approving co uh, condominiums uh, uh, for approval. The board changed. And, and it changed the whole complexion of that board and the, the way they operate. So it's very important to get involved. For, the, for our listening audience, for the people, because these are all condominiums, uh, and uh, your, your district is oh, 70 lots, of, lots 70 of condominiums. 70 percent condos. Okay, and I think we've got a map yes. of your district somewhere, and uh, if we can show it on, on the screen while we're talking. So what areas are in Senate District 12? This is really your central urban Honolulu. So it's Kaka'ako, Makali, Mo'ili'ili, uh, Ala Moana, Sheridan and Waikiki. So it's like that big chunk along the coastline and also uh, intruding into Makali Mo'ili'ili are those condos and apartments. So I see our urban district as kind of the canary in the coal mine. That What happens in Kaka'ako or in Waikiki really will infiltrate other areas, although they say, oh, you know, build densely downtown and, and uh, you know, keep the country country. That's not going to happen if we're not vigilant and we're not involved and we don't see what's good for Hawaii. Okay, and, you know, in your campaign with all these condominiums, what kind of challenges have you uh, encountered? Well, I think the biggest challenge is that condos are secure. They, and for good reason. You want to have a secure place to live, especially when some of these condos have 500 people in them, you know? Mm -hmm. so, so they are secure, so you can't really get into them. But what I've done in my campaign is the build relationships. So I know people in different condos, or we meet people when I do coffee hours or, or when, I do, when I go to meetings. And you find people who are interested in the cause. We want good government. We want to have people who are accessible to us. Okay, so then they will have a coffee hour, or they will send it out to their friends in the condo. And you start educating condo members. So you can get into condos, but you have to do it relation, person by person, relationship by relationship. Remember the one that we had at Wailana, the couple was very gracious in, in having actually all the legislators or all the candidates there uh, for the area. And you, you then get to meet firsthand and hear firsthand the issues and the people who will represent you. And you know this this uh, challenge about getting access to condominiums. Do you think that's a bad thing? Well, yes and no. I think it it's it. I, I don't I don't think that it's a bad thing if you're trying to protect your residents. It is a bad thing because condo dwellers stay within their unit sometimes, not even within their building. <laughs> And so you're isolated from what's going around, around you. So then all of a sudden you see, why is that homeless shelter or homeless uh, building coming up across the street? I didn't even know about it. I had to read it in the paper. Or why is it that, that this condo is being built right across the street with lights shining and glaring in my, my condo uh, when I didn't know about it? So, so things happen around you and you're not aware because you're so isolated. So it is a bad thing that you can't get informed about your environment and what affects you. And one of the things too, you know, uh, with, um, uh, with condo people or condo residents is it appears that, you know, a lot of them don't know their elected officials, who their elected officials are. So they really don't know who to call if something happens. Like, like you mentioned, the condo goes up across the street and somehow uh, that building affects, you know, your mm -hmm. uh, quality of life in your building. So it's like, who do you call? Right, right, right. right. And, I, and I think that's why the condo dwellers don't get their fair share. At, but thanks to you, you're there representing us at the Capitol. But very few legislators live in condos. 
and really don't represent the interest of condo dwellers so so you've got to educate them only way to do it is by being more involved and calling your legislator and legislators in condo dense districts like mine should really represent condo owners so you know you need to to really be in touch with them and if they're not doing the work of the district then you should be looking for other people to to run and and so you, what your message to condo dwellers is that they need to know who who represents them yes and they need to be talking to their elected officials yes. about their concerns yes. and not waiting until something happens that you know like a building yes. goes up and then it's kind of too late yes and right? and and th this is how i believe um the relationship should be between the constituents and the elected official is that you form a relationship so when um you don't have to wait for the condo to come up next door your elected official should be aware of they, they see plans they see stuff coming before them on, on their desk uh, they should be having your your number or your email and say hey this is coming up what do you think about this so it's a two-way street not waiting just for the problem to come but if they don't know who you are it's kind of hard to get in touch with you and and that's the isolation of being in con private condos where you have no contact with the, the elected officials so part of it in getting engaged and finding out is now when it's campaign season go find out who's running and and put them to be accountable to you I mean, when, just like I guess vote. one example is uh, the fire sprinkler law. That's right. But when the Marco Polo fire happened uh, in July of 2017, the mayor immediately decided that all high-rise residential buildings had to be retrofitted with fire sprinklers, and that created uh, a huge oh, yes. uproar for you know the about buildings. 300 buildings in Oahu. Yes, and and a lot of the older buildings that didn't have fire sprinklers that are, are, are the residents are older, so they're on fixed income. So it was even more threatening to these people. And but, you know, luckily, you know, we were able to uh, you know mobilize these people yes, and get them into yes. the uh, into the city council. Well, thanks to you. And yes. and and you know and um, and we have a champion there. We have two champions. We have uh, Council and Member Fukunaga and Council Member Kobayashi. and uh, Kobayashi. Kobayashi. I mean, who have a lot of condos. In fact, their districts overlap yours, right? Right, right. And, and, and so, I mean, they decided that they were going to have this community conversation. And then they dragged in Council Member Trevor Ozawa, who was 100% uh, in favor of that bill. And after... He turned him around. I mean, right. Yeah. He, he, listened to, he listened for hours to these people. <laughs> and he, he testified at one of the council hearings you know, I changed my mind. You know, uh, he had to change his mind. These were his constituents, right, right. and uh, and 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 so that was what, one of the lessons of you need to get involved because if you don't get involved, bad things can right. happen to you. And you know, and luckily we yeah, were able to change. That was really a good treasure, example. Trevor around, really, but. really good example. That example, and also the Ala Moana Beach Park, where fourteen hundred people swarmed and said, "We don't want all this this planning of the mayors." And, and do something about it, and don't change it. Just fix the bathrooms, thank you, you know. Okay, so. well, you know, we're going to take a break right now, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to talk about why, you know, condo residents should be involved in what happens in the state legislature, where you're running. Okay. Okay? This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. If you're not in control of how you see yourself, then who is? Live above the influence. When I was growing up, I was among the one in six American kids who struggle with hunger. But with the power of breakfast, the kids in your neighborhood can think big and be more. Go to hungeris.org to make breakfast happen for kids in your neighborhood. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, inviting you to come visit with us on Cannabis Chronicles. Attend thousand year odyssey where we explore and examine the plant that the muse has given us and stay with us as we explore all of the facets of this planet on Wednesdays at noon. Please join us. Aloha. Okay, welcome back uh, to Condo Insider. My name is Jane Sugimura and we are talking about why you should let elected officials and candidates 
have access to your building because you could benefit from it. And I have as my guest today, uh, Sharon Moriwaki, who's running for the state Senate in District 12, which is 70% condo dense. Right. And so, you know, she, <laughs> she's the one uh, that, you know, would be dealing with all this. Now, you're running for the state Correct. Senate. Correct. And, and <coughs> there is a state law that governs all condos, Chapter 514B. Correct, yes. And, and so a lot of the stuff that we deal with, you know, are changes to 514B. Uh, so you're, you, would, you would be our go-to person now, right, right, if you get that's elected. Right. That's right. And I hope that, um, that any change to 514B really will help the residents and the owners of, of condos and not just change, change it for change's sake, which many bills I've seen in the past have been, you know, knee-jerk reaction. Oh, we don't like this, and somebody gets after somebody. But it, really making it easier for people to live together in condos, which are very dense kind of building, multi -family In the last, dwellings. you know, the last two years, last two legislative sessions, uh, a form uh, a form of this ombudsman bill uh, was introduced and mm -hmm. uh, debated and I guess to boil it down the ombudsman bill is it w would have been a process where a condo owner could complain to the ombudsman <laughs> or to the ombudsman agency and that entity or that person would then resolve the problem <laughs> and make the bad <laughs> board of directors or association somehow comply. I mean, and, and although if, I, I think if, if, if that was something that could be done, I would probably have been in favor of it. But one thing I think the legislature, mm -hmm. and, and, and now that, you know, hopefully if you make, you know, if you get elected, you need to remember 514B is based on the, the, the uh, principle of self-governance, which means that the owners vote for the board, the board runs the building, and the legislature does not <laughs> act as big brother to the associations. And but you know, there, but there, there are issues that need mm -hmm. to be resolved. Mm -hmm. And and so, I mean, what have you got to say about you know the bills that might come on come to you on your desk? Well, I think that um, I think that. There is that on the books already, the condo education fund. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that it's been tapped enough, and I don't think there's been enough. I think this is a good program that should be continued. Um, but others like that. Um, and looking at educating residents, I think people don't know that 514B is a self-governance um, run um, for run governance for, for multi-dwelling, multi, multi unit dwellings. And really it is people getting along with each other. It's like having a big family in one building. Right. And, and how do we get along? So a lot of these going to third parties or, or ombudsmen or anything else outside or to court, a lot of people you know, say, we're gonna sue you. We don't like what you're doing, we're gonna sue you. But it, it, they don't realize that all of that money is coming out of their association budget, which really should be there to build or, or maintain their, their uh, building and their property grounds and, and pay their staff, that it's depleting their supply of making their building a really nice place to live. Right. And those people who say, I'm going to sue you, obviously don't know what the law says, because the law basically says if you sue the association, and don't go through the alternative dispute resolution process that's in the statute, you may not recover your attorney's fees because a judge can look at your lawsuit and say, hey, you know there's a statute that says you gotta go to mediation first and you gotta go to arbitration and you come to the courts if neither one of those things work. Yeah, and we need to educate residents that you can't just go willy-nilly and sue anybody you want because you don't get your way. And right. that's a real big problem in condos, I think. Right, and and there is a, you know something called a condo specialist up at the you know and and they're a state employee. They're with the uh, DCCA under mm -hmm. the Real Estate Commission, and I think there's a number and there's a website. The website is a terrific website. The State of Hawaii DCCA mm -hmm. Real Estate Commission, and it has articles. It has the whole 514B. It has. Um, and, and, and it has seminars. They mm. have taped seminars on, on, and, you know, on, on, on different topics 
that are on that website. And, uh, and I mean, there's just a huge resource. In fact, one year as a, uh, as, um, uh, for the realtors, they taught them. There was a whole seminar on hmm. 514B. Wow. Chapter by, you know, wow, you, know right. you know, they went through the entire uh, mm. chapter. Mm. And that is all on the, uh, the DCCA wow. website. So anybody who says that, that they can't, you know, they don't, there's no resource, they have not been to the DCCA real estate. Mm. And this is free. Mm. Do you right? have one of your shows that does that so that, you know, at least like an intro, if you're coming on the board, this is an intro, here's what you need to know. I mean, is there something like that, that they can get these episodes? We haven't quite done a show on that, and that's one thing maybe Richard and I should think about. But I know when we did our seminar on, you know, now you're on the board, mm -hmm. mm. what do you do? Yeah. Oh. One of those that's, kinds. Yeah, yeah. We did talk about resources. We spent the whole maybe first 15 minutes talking about resources that is available online. That's great. You know, yeah. so that you, it's not like you have to go out and get a book or you have to go someplace. You can just sit there in a computer. If you don't have a computer, go to the library, mm -hmm. right? All of this stuff is online. And, you know, the things that, you know, we need to, uh, you know, teach, pe teach the residents is that they can't keep hiding behind things like, well, I don't know or I'm going to sue you. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, because that shows that they don't know what, mm -hmm. you know, what, mm -hmm. what their remedies are. Or, and one of the things... The um, uh, mediation, evaluative mediation, is you pay for the you you have a uh, you 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 file for evaluative mediation, and you have a retired judge, who is the neutral, mm -hmm. and you pay for one hour of that person's professional time, and the state of Hawaii will wow. subsidize the balance because wow. it's important to resolve these disputes cheaply and quickly because you don't want people mm -hmm. fighting with each other mm -hmm. who live in the mm -hmm. same that's building. That's right. That's right? a real problem. Yeah. That, I mean, yeah. that's a problem yeah. when, you, when you have people who are mad at each other right. and, and, and they live in the building and it just festers. Mm -hmm. and, they, and, it, and if it isn't resolved one way or the other, it gets worse. It does. It does. Yeah. I mean, it's very awkward for people who live in the building and, and mm -hmm. to deal with that. So does DCCA have um, monies or do, can they use part of that condo fund to actually send out to all the condo resident managers or board presidents once a year saying, here are the resources, this is the website, here's the link, at least send it out so that they know because I like I, I kind of like to know? think that, you know, and we've been working with the property managers for, you know, quite a while. And so they should, um, you know, have they should know about the access. They may know, but they're not giving it to like residents. Right. And that, you know that, that's what I what, what, what my concern was, uh, because you know there was in fact there was this this uh, uh, thing that was in the newspaper um, uh, about the one point nine million dollar lawsuit in Maui uh, about a disabled person. Oh yes, I who remember. Was not yeah, allowed yeah, yeah. to uh, <laughs> yeah. keep his wood floor. Yeah. You yeah. know, and I'm thinking. How, why did that go to court? And when I talked to the lawyer, he did not know about the evaluative mediation program. Oh. And, you know, so I'm thinking, okay, we have failed. You know, and, and he says he will look at that the next time. You know, and, and it's and on the lawyer. website. The lawyer, yeah, didn't. The lawyer oh, didn't know about geez, it. Yeah. So it's on the website, on the DCCA website, the whole thing about evaluative mediation. You pick up the phone and you call dispute prevention resolution or any of the contractors that are listed on the DCCA who do evaluative mediation. It's a contract mm -hmm. with the state of Hawaii, mm -hmm. okay? Wow. And they're listed there. And if you want to do evaluative mediation, you, all you do is you pick up the phone and you call them and they will arrange, if you're the unit owner and you want to do mediation with your, evaluative mediation with your association, you call the contractor and the, that contractor will notify the association mm -hmm. that you've mm -hmm. contacted them. And they contact the DCCA to arrange for the payment. Wow. You know, so you don't That's do anything. Great. You just pick That's up the great. phone and make one phone call. So easy and so few. <laughs> no. And right? there's no paperwork oh. involved. Uh, you know, and so it's, you know, so yeah. anyway, uh, we have to keep doing these shows and trying That's to get great, the word out. Great service. You know, and, and the legislators all know about the evaluative, I mean, and because we, we had to pitch it to the legislators saying, you got to approve this. 
and, and because they have to approve using the condo ed fund mm, to pay for uh, the yeah, mediators, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. right? So we had to pitch the mm. fund and we said, look, you know, you don't know what it's like living in a condominium where you're fighting with your owners. I mean, it's yeah. a living hell. It is. Because you see <laughs> them in the elevator, you see them in the hallway, <laughs> and they get, they give you stink eye, yeah. and then they're talking yeah. to their neighbors, and, yeah. you know, and everybody's, you know. Yeah. It, it, you it doesn't know, it's make a big, living it's a, very, a, yeah, very enjoyable. Very big, yeah. It's a big it's mess. Yeah. And so, yeah, we need to, we need to try to get the word out about this. And, um, but we're getting kind of close to the end of our show. How can condo residents get involved in the electoral process? Well, I think, number one, be, be engaged, look through candidate forums, see who's running, find out who's running, <laughs> call them. Um, I, I have my uh, walking card. It has my email address, my phone number, my website. Go to the website, check them out. If and in fact, it's, it's, you know. it's appearing on the screen. I just saw oh, it. Oh, you did? Oh, yeah. yay. The okay. Office of Elections. Yeah. And then you can find out who the candidates are. Go to the Office of Elections. But you should know it's in the papers. But go find out who is your, find out where you live and what your district is. And yeah. if you go to the you know? Office of Elections, they have, a, they have this. Put your address in and they'll tell you, you. Where, where your precinct or your uh, representative district, your state district, your council district. And those are three different representatives you have to tap all the time. So get to know them. Get to know who's running. If you, you know, haven't had your legislator in, or your senator or your representative in your district, call them and say, I want to find out more about, about who you are, what you're doing, you know, and, and make contact. And uh, if they're not responsive, keep looking at the other candidates. The, the whole thing, I think democracy is exciting. We should get more people running because it should be competitive so that you know you have choices. Right now, there's too few running, so you don't have the choice. But make, make them accountable. Make people in office accountable. And if not, find other people. It's, it's OK, and I want to make that. the announcement that October 9th is a deadline for people to register to vote. And on that website, that link, you can register online. October 9th is the last day that you can register for the general election. But, but there's also walk. You can walk, walk in, in on the day of. You can go in with your um, ID, and you can register that day. But the October 9th date is if you want to have ballot mailed to you. But the walk-in on the day of, you can take your ID and register. OK, well, we're running out of time, so we're going to have to uh, end this program. Thank you very much oh, for coming. Thank and, you. Uh, good luck on your campaign. Thank you very much. And um, and next week we're going to be talking about uh, how to run a meeting, and uh, and and to deal with uh, uh, you know the crazy people who come and 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 try to disrupt your meeting. But anyway, please join us for con another episode of Condo Insider for people who live, work, and uh, deal with condos. Hopefully. Thank you very much for joining us. Great. Thank you.